Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, we're going to be talking again about spirit, soul, and body. We're going to continue to have this free product offer. That's uh, it's an $84 value that's yours absolutely free. We'll tell you how to get it. But we're going to be talking about why is it that you need Jesus? Why can't you just be good enough and get into heaven? I'll actually explain that today. And we're going to continue to talk about our draw so that you're getting the most out of trying to get your firearm out ready to protect you and your family. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. So for the last two days, we've been talking about the draw. We've been talking about get your hands up to practice your draw. Don't make it down here. And then we talked about getting that established grip, getting it high up on the back strap, fingers wrapped around, uh, thumb nice and high even from there, and establishing the firmness of your grip, the other hand coming in. Now we're going to talk about getting it out of the holster. Okay. When I bring it up out of the holster, I do not reach for the trigger. I keep it along the frame because I am not ready to shoot. As I, when I take this, I'm going to rotate this over. So when this gun is going to come up high and it's going to rotate up, I'm going to get as high close to my pec as possible. The reason for that is it helps me with weapons retention in the event that somebody was to charge me instead of me bringing it up out here, this actually has it nice and high. Now I can shoot from here. It's one of the reasons if you look down there, I've got my thumb between this and my pack, notice it's not out here. It's actually right here because this tightness would allow me to actually shoot from this position. Okay, but and that thumb protects it because if I had it here and this weapon cycles, it's actually going to cycle into my body and that's going to hurt. It's actually also going to jam the firearm and now it's a, a paperweight when I need it to be a gun. So again, my hands are going to be here. I'm going to reach down and I'm going to grab a hold of that as high as I can, covering that, get my firmness in my grip and get it up. Now this hand's going to be ready for the support, but I've got to get this back in here. Now one of the reasons I don't just take it up here and rotate it is because of what we're going to talk about tomorrow, about our hands coming together. So again, I've started here, I'm going to reach down, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to jerk it up and prepare to meet my next hand. We'll get into that tomorrow. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. We're going to continue talking today about spirit, soul, and body. I want to make you again aware of the free product offer we have this week. It's worth $84. It's spirit, soul, and body, a message that will explain a lot. We'll send this to you absolutely free by contacting the ministry. Our partners are the ones that make this available to you. Um, it's not that it's cheap. We know. I mean, it, I think it's actually for sale on the website, uh, but we don't want to keep finances uh, we don't want finances to keep you from receiving your answer. Okay, so again, that's uh, spirit, soul, and body. We're going to continue talking about this. I think this is an extremely important subject. I think that without an understanding of this, it actually affects a lot of things in your life. I think sometimes when, um, you know, I say, th I think, uh, we had somebody contact me and say, I need to be more confident rather than saying, I think. I'm actually pretty confident about these things. It's just, you know, here, here's the thing. Most people, most people, without an understanding of this, really go the wrong direction in a lot of different ways. And it affects every aspect of your being able to hear from God. People, as we start talking about healing, as we start talking about all these different things that God has placed on the inside of you, People sometimes think we're, we're asking them to play a mind game. Healing is probably one of the things, I'm going to get into this later, but people, they think, oh, you're just playing a mind game. You're trying to, uh, when you're, I'm supposed to say I'm healed even when I'm not, and I'm supposed to somehow play a mind. No, that's, that's not it. Or we start talking about spiritual things and they're saying, well, it's just a mind game. You're trying to, you're going to think about this, but you're not going to think about that. No, actually, when you start talking about spirit, soul, and body, and again, 
th this is this is the reality because this existed before any of this other stuff existed this is the real deal right here this will continue on after these are gone well technically the soul doesn't leave either it's integrated with with the spirit but here here's the thing you're if you're living your life and we got into this yesterday and listen i wasn't trying to condemn you but the majority of people live everything is about their body everything or or honestly everything is about this their feelings you know do i want to get into this today lord Let's look at our scriptures first, okay, and then we'll get into some stuff. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, he, he starts, it's where we get the definition of the different parts of us. And 5.23, it says this, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God makes it clear, you, you, there's three parts to you. And those three parts are, again, spirit, soul, and body. Now, I like to say it like this. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And now part of that, we get that from, go, go back with me over here to uh, Genesis, where we've, been, where we've been at, Genesis uh, 2 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being so uh, to be, be clear this gets formed but man is not a living being this gets formed but really technically man doesn't exist yet are, are, are you with me and so what happens is so, so the reason I say it like this is that you are a spirit. Why do I say that? Because this was exi this was physically there, but you're not alive until this. So basically, this is the living part of you. This is who you really, really, truly are. So you are a spirit. Because again, the spirit man can live without the body, but the body cannot live without the spirit. Remember over there, uh, once again, let's real quick look at it. James chapter 2. It, it makes this extremely clear. It says, James 2 and verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So in other words, this continues on without, again, for all of you that are podcast subscribers, spirit continues on without body, body does not continue on without spirit. So, so why, why do we spend all of our time living for something that isn't going to continue on? Okay. This, I, this is not condemnation. This is to get you to think. This part, if everything you're doing is to deal with this part, I need a better job, I need more money, I need a better car, I need, um, everything is about this. If anything goes wrong with this, your day is ruined. If anything goes wrong with this, you're in misery. And, okay, and I'm sorry for the way this is going to come out, but you need to hear it, okay? I love you, and you need to get a hold of this. Maybe you're a dad, and you don't spend very much time at home because you're busy working hard to provide for your families this. I want them to have, be able to, to have better food. I want them to be able to have a better house and a better car. Okay, I think that's admirable. I think you should do that. I think a man that has not, cared for his own family is worse than an infidel and is denied the faith. But let me ask you something. What are you doing to help your family with this? The spirit. Are, what are you doing to make sure 
that this part of their life is growing. Because right now you're caring for something that is going to turn to dust. What about this? The spirit. Now, let me, for those of you who don't have kids or something, let me, let me, this is going to be brutal. Here's the thing. If you are spending your every waking moment trying to take care of what you can see, feel, and touch, there is going to come a day that you will leave this place. Now, it'll either be smoking or non-smoking, right? It'll be Jesus or it'll be hell, one or the other. But here's the thing. Let's say you do go to heaven. Let's say you accept Jesus, but you spent all of your time pursuing the comforts for this or for your soul. You, let's say you live 120 years. Your life has no meaning. It doesn't matter that you existed because everything you lived your life for was consumed. It turned to dust. What you do in relation to this changes everything. And it doesn't just happen at the end of your life. It happens today. Do not live consumed with this. Because it will cost you. And I'm not talking about heaven or hell. Listen, I, I don't want to live a life that has no meaning. I don't want to live a life for a bunch of stuff that is just going to be consumed and turned to dust. I like nice things. I like nice cars. I like nice guns. I like these things. But I can't live for them because eventually they turn to nothing. Think about all the ancient civilizations around the world that have been here that existed thousands of years ago. And they built them solid. They built them strong. They built great edifices. You know, even the great Sphinx in Egypt is missing a nose. Right? Because ultimately, no matter how much you build something, no matter how well you build it, if it is of the flesh, if it is of matter, it will turn to dust. And if that's what you lived your life for, you lived your life for nothing. But this changes it. And I know that's a sombering thought. But, and, and listen, I'm not saying you can't have great nice things in the flesh. You just can't live for them. Now, but, but I want to take a, step, a little bit step further now uh, with some of these understanding. And I want to specifically talk about r- reality, Right? And I want to talk about, in particular, about you interacting with the Lord. Because this is important. I'm going to use my shirt. Okay. Let's say that I had, with my shirt, let's say I was wearing this shirt. Okay. Let's say this is what I was wearing on the broadcast today. Now, the broad, you're sitting here, you're here with us taping with television. And when this broadcast gets over, I take this shirt off. And let's say it was a great broadcast. I mean, like a humdinger. Like, man, it really tripped your trigger. You were excited. You heard things from the Lord you'd never heard before. And you're excited. So I take this shirt off and I hang it up right over here. When it's over, are you going to go over to the shirt and say, man, that that was a great broadcast today. You really did an awesome job. Man, you showed me things that I had never really seen before. Is that what you're going to do? Because that's weird, right? If if, if I step out of this shirt, then the shirt is no longer alive. The thing that brought significance to the shirt is no longer there. How you doing today? Everything going all right? Everything good? That was was an excellent broadcast. I want you to, the way you really brought out about spirit, soul, and body, that got me right here. 
That's weird, isn't it? But do you know how many times people try to get the Lord to talk to their shirt? That they try to get Him to interact with this? And this is not to, to the Lord. This isn't really you. This is just what you're traveling around in. You say, oh, people don't do that. People don't do that. Oh, really? Um, Lord, <clears throat> if this is you, um, I'm asking you to send three red cars to drive by. Why did you do that? Because you want this. You want God to speak to this. Your eyes. Let me see something. Lord, if it's you, that, Lord, give me goosebumps. What are you doing? You're wanting the Lord to interact with this. Listen, as I'm going through these things, there's, some, there's a lot I need to get over to you. And so I don't want you to forget as we're going through this, don't forget about our free product offer. It's worth 84 bucks, but there's like, I don't know, 13, 15 something teachings on here. This, this, will, this gets deeper than what I'm going to be able to get into these broadcasts. This begins to talk about how you get away from this. But folks, you can't walk around in life asking God to deal with your shirt. Making God interact with your shirt. Because this is not you. God is a spirit. You know, the Bible talks about um, when Jesus says this thing, he goes, there's coming a day that we will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, not just according to the flesh. Do you know that there's plenty of people that they go into church and their shirts are responding, right? See, this is going to look a little weird. But they put their hands up and they're singing and stuff. But unfortunately, the person in the shirt is not engaging with the Lord. Their heart is not towards the Lord. You're thinking about breakfast. You're thinking about dinner. You're thinking about how your wife ticked you off or your husband ticked you off. And sometimes you're just reacting, allowing the music to affect the shirt, but not you. You're getting emotional. You're crying. Are you with me? And this is not, life is not about this shirt. Life is about the man in the shirt. Don't be consumed with your shirt. Quit trying to get God to do things through the shirt. And if something goes wrong in your shirt, don't, don't let that affect you and your joy i've seen and and this is i'm speaking to somebody in particular right now okay you had something go wrong in your shirt they diagnosed you with something and now you are so upset and distressed you're making your family miserable they told you you don't have long left and yet you're stressing so much over your shirt over the fact that your body's going to lay down you're you are saved you are born again but yet you're still stressing over the shirt. Don't do that. Don't ruin the time that you have left. I, I wish I had time. I wish, in fact, if, if that's you and you need healing in your body, please contact the ministry. We will send you healing school absolutely free. Hopefully I'm going to be teaching on healing sometime soon. But in the meantime, we don't want you to die. But right now, don't get so consumed with the shirt that you're, you're ruining the time that you have left. Anyway, this brings up another point, okay? And this is, this is actually, let, let's talk about salvation, okay, being born again. The majority of people, if I walk up to them and I say, are you going to heaven? They'll say, yeah, I believe so. Why? Why do you believe you're going to heaven? And this is what they'll say. Well, I believe I've done more good than I've done bad. As though there's a scale, <laughs> Right? And, and this is the way the majority of people out there believe. And, and listen, if I can do, if by doing mostly good, I end up in heaven, then I have no need of a savior, right? Because I can just do more good than bad and I'm okay. It doesn't work that way, folks. And, and this is why. Oh, man. Here, go with me to Ephesians. This is what he says. 
and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Okay, I'm about to open a can here of worms. So, okay. I apologize. I'm a little bit scattered with this. I, I went a different direction in my heart than I thought it was going to. Go back with me to Genesis chapter 2. I want to go down a little bit further. And this is uh, verse uh, 15. He says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man of every saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it you will surely die. Okay. So this, this is, for lack of a better term, this is what happened. Adam is, here's Adam. This is his shirt, right? This is the shirt. Adam's walking around in this shirt. Well, there becomes a day that he eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, most of us think when he said, in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. We get the impression that this is what would happen. You eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and you're going to die like that. No, that's not what happened because, see, to God, this is not really life. This is the thing that life contains. Life is in this life. Life is in this. So what happens is, is Adam is walking around like this, and there comes a day that he eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This looks the same, but the person on the inside of it dies, becomes separated from God, that they are no longer in union, that what was in the man is now death, not life. And so the shirt is still walking around, but the person on the inside of the shirt has changed at the very core. That man died. See, this again, this goes back to reality. Because a lot of people think that this is death for the shirt to fall over. But this isn't, this isn't really life. The, the shirt isn't really life. It's the man inside of the shirt that is really life. And that man did die the day he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because the man on the inside of the shirt fundamentally changed and death became into him. And this is, uh, again, let's go back to Ephesians now. This is what it is saying here in Ephesians. He says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. What is he saying? He's saying there was coming a day that your shirt was walking around, but there was a dead man in it, that you were dead. And so something, and this is the reason you need of a, uh, a Savior. Because once you're born, and, t and technically at a certain age, once you begin to become aware of right and wrong, sin will revive and you will die. Children, when they're born, they are alive unto God. I don't have time to get into that right now, but I will, okay? Um, hopefully. So once sin revives and you die, see, you're walking around in life. But the guy on the inside of this is dead. He is separated from God. You are dead in your trespasses and sins. Now, so when you come up and you say, well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do more good than bad. You can do all good you want to in this shirt, but unless you change the man in the shirt, it does absolutely no good. And there's nothing you can do Nothing you can do to change the man in the shirt. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the ability to bring yourself from death to life. It can't be done. There, in order for the man in the shirt to change, you have to have a savior. You have to enter into a relationship with somebody that has the ability to take the dead man out of the shirt and put a living man in the shirt. Hmm, who could that be? 
It could be the man that at the very beginning put a living man in the shirt. It could be, and it is, the one that held the shirt up, uh, up on day six and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. But see, here's the thing. God lost the ability to do that after man fell, but then Jesus came. Jesus came to change the man in the shirt because there was nothing the shirt could ever do to earn its way back to God. There's nothing you could ever do in the body to earn your way back to God because no matter how good you could ever be, you can't change the man in the body. But Jesus could. Jesus could give His life, bear your sin, so that that man that is on the inside of your shirt, the man that's on the inside of your body, could be recreated. Not resurrected, recreated. So what happened at salvation, and the reason you must have a Savior, is because you cannot make yourself alive. You can wander around in the shirt all you want to, but you do not have the ability to make yourself alive. So you need to have somebody do it for you. And you can do that by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That changes the man in the shirt. Now, there's a lot more I can explain. I want you to, I, I'm, I'm gonna, when I come, I'm going to come right back and I want to pray with you. If you haven't changed the man in the shirt, we want to do that today. But don't forget about this free product offer that will explain this in more detail. Come back back. To receive your free copy of this new teaching entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body, order online at fighttowin.tv or call us at 1-800-215-0428. If you've never changed the man in the shirt, if all you've been doing is trying to be good in order to get access to heaven, you can't without changing the man in the shirt. You must be made alive again, and there's only one way to do that. And will you pray with this with me today? Say, it's very simple. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today, right now, I accept that Jesus paid the price so that I could be made alive, so that I could change the man in the shirt. Lord, I ask you right now to receive me as your child, and I declare this day that Jesus is my Lord and that I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The man, whether you feel it or not, we'll get in this tomorrow, but whether you feel it or not, the man in the shirt just changed. Please contact this ministry. We have some free materials we want to bless you with. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Kurt Owen reminding you to fight to win, and Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Please take advantage. We put all of our, we put not only the television show after they aired, but we also have some additional teaching on YouTube. Please go to Fight to Win with Kurt Owen on YouTube and like and subscribe today.